واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا صدق الله العظيم So yes we left you on a cliff if I can say so and uh, you know what hanging in the air to know what's the way forward it was verse 20 that we concluded wherein the communication ended at the point where Maryam alayha salam asked Jibreel how is it possible for me to have a child when I'm not married and nor have I committed an act of immorality there are different places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the good news was conferred uh, to you know what be it the a prophet or the wife of a prophet uh, in, in in chapter 11 in surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when the angels came to Ibrahim alayhi salam and they conveyed uh, to Ibrahim alayhi salam spouse uh, that is Sarah um, that uh, she will expect and she will have a child uh, she laughed out of joy that uh, she will be blessed with a child by the name of Ishaq and uh, after Ishaq she will be subsequently blessed with, with a grandchild by the name of Yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam قالت, she said Ya waylata a'alidu a'alidu wa ana ajuzun wa hadha ba'li shaykha a'alidu will I give birth walada yalidu to give birth the Arabic poet says lidu lil mawti wa bnu lil kharabi give birth only to die and build only to demolish this is what we refer to as lami aqibat in academic language lidu lil mawti meaning the outcome of birth is one day you have to you have to leave this world and you build because one day it has to be demolished but anyway like we read in surah ikhlas and i give birth and i am old and this is my husband and in the concluding verses of the 26 juz of the quran in surah dhariyat she, she kind of slaps her face in astonishment and she says Sakkat wajha wa qalat ajuzun aqeem ajuzun aqeem old and barren old and barren old and barren but yes qalu kathalik the angel said yes it will happen and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed and endowed them uh, with Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam um, okay, so now we have it here in verse 20. Maryam radiallahu anha asked Isa alayhi salam, and how is this going to happen? Walam yam sasni bashar. No male has touched me. No human has touched me. Walam aku baghiya. Baghiya. Uh, and uh, I have not been unchaste, and I have not been immoral, and I have not been adulterous. Okay, verse 21, the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam responds. And subhanallah, this is the favor. Remember, Allah tells us repeatedly in the Quran, Allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha. Wallahu yakhtassu bi rahmatihi man yasha. Wa rabbuka yakhluqu ma yasha wa yakhtar. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. It's the choice of Allah. It's the prerogative of Allah. Whoever he wants to select, he will select. That is his uh, choice and selection but his justice is that whoever will turn to him he'll never uh, deny that person guidance so Maryam radiallahu anha was the choice of the almighty and of course every prophet is the selection of the almighty Allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha Allahu yastafi min al malaikati rusulan wa min al nas okay verse 21 qala he said kathalik it shall be so it shall be so, meaning you will remain like this year. The command of your Rabb has come to pass even though the means are not present. Your Rabb says, uh, giving a, a child without a father is simple for me. Qala kathalik, it will happen like this. Qala rabbuki huwa alayya hayyin. Rabbuki, your Lord has said. Huwa alayya hayyin. And we've mentioned this again uh, in one of the previous segments in the tale and the narrative of Zakari alayhi salam. Huwa alayya hayyin. It's not like now 
We, a child needs to be created uh, different to the regular pattern. So this is more difficult or it's more complex. No, not at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qudra and power is he created Adam alayhi salatu was salam without uh, a male and a female. He created Hawa alayhi salam without a female because she was created from Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And then he created Isa alayhi salam without a male. He created Isa alayhi salam without a male. And of course, he created the general people. Each one is a manifestation of his qudra in a different form. Each one is a manifestation of his qudra in a different form. Qala rabbuki huwa alayya hayyin. Your Lord said it is easy for him. Wali naj'alahu ayatan linnas. Okay, so what's the purpose? of the miraculous birth of Isa alayhi salam. This is key. This is key. وَلِنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ عَلَىٰ قُدْرَتِنَا So that we make this Isa alayhi salam and his miraculous birth, etc. and his life a reflection of our greatness. The point is that Isa will be created amazing and unique so that you look at Isa alayhi salam's life and teachings and you marvel at the greatness of the Almighty. Surely Isa alayhi salam is a great person, but he's a human, he's a prophet. And the greatness that was given to him was given to him by the Almighty. Allah is the greatest and Allah's greatness is by himself. Everybody else, Allah gives them, Allah conveys it, Allah confers it. Uh, in um, Surah Yunus, in Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention, chapter 10, Jews 11, Ala inna al-izzata lillahi jami'a. Honor belongs to the Almighty. Under this ayah in Bayan al-Quran, it is written, وَمَا يُتَرَاءَ لِغَيْرِهِ هُوَ لَهُ حَقِيقًا And whatever respect and reverence and honor you see given to anyone else belongs to Allah in reality. وَمَا يُتَرَاءَ لِغَيْرِهِ هُوَ لَهُ حَقِيقًا وَإِنَّمَا ذَلِكَ الْغَيْرِ أَحَدُ مَظَاهِرِ عِزَّتِهِ فَحَسْبٌ And that particular individual is no more than a manifestation, an expression of that izzah and the honor of Allah. That's it. So the izzah and the glory belongs to Allah. كَالْضِيَاءِ هُوَ لِلشَّمْسِ حَقِيقًا Brightness and brilliance and effulgence is the quality of the sun. In the same chapter, in Surah Yunus, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is he who has made the sun radiant. So now you see brightness on the earth. The brightness on the earth is a reflection of the brightness of the sun. That's it. It's not, it's not the earth has, has lit up. It's a reflection from there. Likewise, you see any person being dignified and honored and privileged and respected and revered in the true sense of the word. And I say that in a qualifying statement because one of the signs of Qiyamah is Ukrim al-Rajulu sharrihi that a person would be honored out of fear from his evil, which will not be honor in the true sense of the word. Superficial, you know what? Just salute him, respect him, revere him so that you cover your interests. But uh, respect in the true sense and of course this is absolute honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing uh, Sayyidatina Maryam alayhi salam with so uh, honor belongs to the Almighty and everybody else that has that honor it is a manifestation of the honor of the Almighty Allah inna al-izzata lillahi jami'a respect honor glory is is the share of the almighty exclusive and then to whom allah has conveyed it or conferred it upon in al izzata lillahi wa li rasulihi wa lil mu'minin izza belongs to allah and then to his nabi his nabi because of the maqam and the status that allah has given to habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the true believers because of their compliance to the teachings of allah and his nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam so we have uh, made Isa لِنَجْعَلَهُ ayah a sign عَلَىٰ uh, قُدْرَتِنَا that this is our power, this is how great, this is how our, our, our strength uh, is. We can do anything. وَرَحْمَةً مِنَّا and he is a mercy, he is a mercy from us. Mercy to anyone who will follow him. Those who will take to the teachings of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, then... Um, uh, 
that, that, that will be a mercy for him. Anybody who will follow the Nabi of his time, that will be a source of mercy. Of course, the Messenger وسلم, is Rahmatun Lil Alameen. He is a mercy unto all mankind. So that is verse number 21. Qala kadhalik, that your Lord, it will happen in the same way. Qala rabbuki huwa alayya hayyin. Your Lord said it is easy for me. And the purpose and the object of the miraculous birth of Isa alayhi salam, linaj'alahu ayatan lin nas. Uh, to make him a sign of the power, the Qudrat of the Almighty, and a mercy to those that will follow. وَكَانَ أَمْرًا maqdiya, And the matter has been concluded. Amran, the matter, maqdiya, decided, decreed, concluded, ordained. It's done and dusted. This is it. It's the decision of, of the Almighty. So this is going to happen. Again, that's the beauty of the Qur'an. Like we always say, the Qur'an goes direct to the point. فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا قَصِيًّا So she conceived him, Isa alayhi salam. And she withdrew with him to a distant place. فَحَمَلَتْهُ Now according to what is mentioned in the tafsir, that Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam uh, blew fi tawqi qameesiha. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam gently blew on her upper chest. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, at the distance, by the will of the Almighty, just came and blew, blew onto her chest, and that soul was then transferred and transmitted uh, into her womb, and fahamalat, she then conceived. Subhanallah, that's the will of Allah. Fertility experts will tell you, this is the time for fertility. This is the time uh, where, you know what, uh, a woman is more fertile. The chances are better. These days of the month, this is how it happens. Everything is in the knowledge and the power and the qudrat of the Almighty. When he intended it, then subhanallah, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, nafakha fi dir'i qameesiha, a fi tawqi qameesiha, a gentle blow on her upper chest. And immediately she felt the conception. Now the word fa, uh, you know, creates a great amount of uh, academic discussion, which of course just enhances the beauty. So uh, fa basically means ta'qib ma'al wasal and thumma means ta'qib ma'al fasal, basic Arabic grammar. So fa denotes sequence without interval and thumma denotes sequence with interval. So if I say akal tu fasharib tu fanim tu, I ate, I drank, and I slept, that means I did it in succession without interval. And if I were to say akal tu thumma sharib tu thumma nim tu, it would basically imply I ate, I had a gap, then I drank something, then I had a break, and then I retired to bed. Now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word fahamalathu, fantabadat bihi. She conceived, and then she then withdrew with him to a distant place suggesting by the uh, meaning that is conveyed in the expression of fa that the conception and uh, the the development of this fetus and the, the the birth of this child all happen instantly fa 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 um فَخَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُذْغَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُذْغَةَ عِظَامًا So this is one opinion, this is one opinion, and other scholars say no, the conception of course took place there, that there's no two opinions about this year, but then Maryam رضي الله عنها then spent the full duration of nine months in which the, the different uh, developments took place of Sayyida, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Be it as it may, uh, the point, the Quran then goes direct to the point of delivery. So whether the conception and the different milestones of the formation of that embryo happen gradually or instantly, this is definite that the Quran speaks of conception and then goes direct to the point of delivery. And this is now verse number 22. Imagine this here, Maryam radiallahu anha is going and um, she's going to take a, 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 a bath. And from there, what has happened? Like, you know, you, you're just casually going to do something or meet someone and lo and behold. And remember, this is a great prophet and, 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 and it's going to shape and change things in the world so much in so many ways. He's amongst the Ulul Azm, uh, Anbiya alayhim wa salatu wa salam. And from assuming a regular common bath to the appearance of a human 
and then seeking refuge in Allah from him and him responding by saying, I am a, uh, an angel and then glad tidings and what glad tidings a child and how a child and it just was happening too quick to process, to digest, to analyze, to absorb and to understand. But that's it. As the Quran said, وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا The matter has been decreed. And I've seen this in my life and I'm sure my brother and my sister, you've seen it. When Allah has decreed something and shifa has been ordained and then he told me and the next best thing we called the doctor and then the theater was open and the operation took place and subhanallah, in 24 hours, the person is back home, the procedure is done and Allah has given shifa. وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا um, the matter is uh, concluded. Again, we find here, فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا قَصِيًّا She withdrew with him, meaning with her child, to a distant place. Uh, so she now moved away and she was now uh, concerned about another whole challenge. So all this is happening instant and she's processing it. And immediately the thought is haunting her. What will people say? Because society is just quick to attack, to insult, to blemish, to character, uh, you know, character assassination and jump the gun without asking anything. <laughs> the poet said, I take solace in the fact uh, that if people have attacked my writings and my speeches, that people have, have, have been blasphemous to Allah and His Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who am I? Okay, my sister, you'll appreciate this more. Uh, labor pain is something a woman experiences and she knows. Now, I know and I, with the grace of Allah, I've seen my, my spouse uh, and, and of course I've heard from my mom uh, about her challenges, etc. And may Allah reward our, our, our women folk, our mothers, our wives, our daughters um, for giving birth. It's the, the, the reward is so immense for this year. Every woman at the time of birth wants to have a conducive environment, she wants a loving hand, she wants a caring doctor, she wants a good facility, uh, she wants. She doesn't want to be into trauma, she doesn't want to be in any stress, she she wants to go through a very peaceful process. Imagine the challenge of Maryam radiallahu anha uh, on the opinion that all this had happened instantly and she's still processing and at the back of her mind the thought that haunts her is what will people say and here we have verse uh, 23 فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَىٰ Labor pain drove her to the trunk of a date palm from which she took support. How often don't you hear a woman saying, you know what, my hubby, I told him I had pain and then my contraction started and then we were in the car and I said, it's too painful and you won't believe I gave birth in the car on the driveway or before uh, we got to the clinic or before we got to the maternity ward. فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَىٰ My brain freezes to imagine this entire process that is happening. مَخَاض uh, labor pain brought her ila nakhla to a date palm and she held on there. She took support. Can you imagine that excruciating pain? Of course, I've seen it with my spouse and it's, it's really difficult. It's very difficult. Men like to say that uh, kidney stone is, uh, is the closest pain that they can experience to labor pain. But I'm sure there's no comparison between the two. Labor pain is a pain that a woman experiences and for her the reward is immense. And, 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 and if you see, it's an amazing thing that, uh, you know, this labor pain is a pain that Allah has kept with every female in every creature. I don't know if you've seen, uh, you know, wildlife documentaries or you've read about this here, uh, but you would see, see a horse giving birth and, and see how much pain she goes through um, in the wild. And then especially uh, where predators are around and how the mother has to care for her little one. It, it, it just brings you to tears that the mother goes through this pain and then she needs to offer that protection and so often she barely gives birth and then you know what, there are predators that would prey on this vulnerable newborn child. So, فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاذُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَىٰ لَا إِلَىٰهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Labor pain drives her to the, uh, the trunk of a date palm and as she's holding on, as she's holding on, قَالَتِ يَا لَيْتَنِي مِتُّ قَبْلَ هَذَا وَكُنْتُ نَسِيًا مَنْسِيًا 
She says, oh, how I wish I had just passed away before this day. I wish I had just passed away before this day. وَكُنْتُ نَسْيَمْ مَنْسِيَّ And I had been completely forgotten. Now, what made her utter this year? There are different interpretations and explanations. One is imagining the state in which she was. Uh, she's alone. The pain is intense. The fear of what people will say. And she was maghloob at that time, overpowered in that moment. And sometimes when you are overpowered momentarily, you don't fully have, uh, you know, your total senses, um, you know, in, 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 in focus or it's not totally aligned. That is one opinion. While the other opinion, and that's the more preferred opinion, is that her desire to have passed away prior to this was motivated by her fear that people are going to insult me and accuse me and I need to persevere and endure. And it must not be that I fall short in the injunctions of perseverance. So uh, out of the fear that I could potentially be deficient in one command of the Almighty, uh, you know what she asked Allah, I wish I had passed away. And of course, if, if that is the case, oh Allah, the times are too challenging for me. The fitnas are too intense for me. Allahumma tawaffani, oh Allah, grant me death because I'm afraid that I would lose my faith or I will compromise in my faith, then that would definitely be permissible. So let's leave it to this point here. It's an emotional moment. She's alone. There is no one around her. No human, no anise, no jalees, no comforting, no doctor, no spouse, nobody. Everything has happened swiftly and instantly. She has come to the, uh, the, the, this date palm. She's holding onto this trunk and she's just sitting there. And now the labor pains and the contractions are happening swiftly. Let's wait and see. How Allah unpacks and unveils the birth itself. May Allah inspire us with the beauty of the Quran. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen.